All right, let's pull off this December 27 edition of the Sportsbank Zone with cricket. It is not much of a jolly Christmas time for Jamaica Talawas fans, though, as news broke last week that the franchise will no longer exist. Well, not at least for now. Guyanese businessman Chris Prasad sold the franchise that he acquired in 2017 back to the Caribbean Premier League ahead of the 2024 season, citing his inability to sustain the Talawas because of lack of commitment from the Jamaican government. Ex-Chief Executive Officer Jeff Miller told local newspaper Jamaica Observer that there are no hard feelings towards Sports Minister Olivia Bamsey Grange. He says, I've met with the Honourable Minister on numerous occasions and she's a fantastic lady. She's verbally provided support over and over, but again, it takes funding to operate the franchise, whether that be in cash or in kind. Miller also expressed concerns over the lack of support for cricket. He says Jamaica is a big brand, a global brand. From what I understand, the government doesn't need CPL or the Talawas to showcase their brand. Maybe Antigua will want that global exposure and Jamaica doesn't need it. We were told on more than one occasion that the other sports bring more to Jamaica, but for the biggest Caribbean island to have iconic stadiums, have some of the world's greatest cricketers, and yet not have cricket in Jamaica is bad. Mm. An Antigua and Barbuda franchise is set to make a return for the first time in a decade. Lance Whitaker. Mm, yeah, well, if I was to read between the lines here from Jeff Miller, he's being, I could say, politically correct, that he doesn't want to attack the Jamaican government for the position they have taken. But he is, in the next sentence, suggesting that it is not a good look for Jamaica. And I understand the point he's making, because uh, Jamaica, through players like Chris Gale and Andre Russell, have produced some of the most exciting T20 cricketers in world cricket in the past decade or so. So um, from, from that standpoint, as a Jamaican, you would be concerned that the country isn't embracing the, the CPL in the way that the Talawas owners would have wanted. Do you suspect that what is happening here is a reflection of the reduced passion for cricket in Jamaica. Uh, I, I think that is a part of it. I think that is a part of it. But to be fair, mm -hmm. if you would look at the attendance, the CPL attendance doesn't reflect mm -hmm. a reduction in interest in cricket. Maybe overall as a sport, Jamaicans aren't as um, big on cricket as they were maybe 20 years ago. But I have seen crowds at Sabina Park and the, the volume of support and so on. And it belies the view that cricket has reduced interest in Jamaica. I would suggest that, whereas that may be true to an extent, mm -hmm. I don't think it's true for T20 cricket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I completely agree with that, by the way, because I think what we have seen in T20 cricket, and I think right across the Caribbean, not just in Jamaica, um, Caribbean people love a party. And that is what the CPL is. That exactly. is what T20 cricket is. It's, it's a party. Um, and wherever there is that level of entertainment, you are going to get fans coming out and, and being part of it. And it's part of why, it's a massive part of why this is so disappointing. And coupled with the fact that Jamaica will not host matches at the T20 um, World Cup next next year yes. um, no there will be no CPL well there will be no Jamaican franchise there was never any guarantee that there would have been CPL in Jamaica in any case yeah um, well there hasn't been any since 2019 there you go yes yeah. um, so from that standpoint it, it's double disappointment it's double disappointment and when you also consider that not a lot of high-level cricket at the moment is being played in Jamaica. I don't remember who it was, but someone made the point that there is a generation of youngsters who have not seen top-level cricket 
in this land. They don't have the opportunity to go to Sabina Park and see some of the best cricketers first in the Caribbean and I guess by extension some of the best cricketers in the world. Um, and you can't be surprised when an, a number of the youngsters who you would want to draw to cricket are being drawn elsewhere um, because they are seeing more of other sports um, than we are seeing of cricket. And, and for me, that is massively disappointing. Yeah, and of course, this issue, Ricardo, extends beyond just a sporting discussion yeah. because, you know, Jamaica is a politically very active um, landscape or has an active landscape and um, the supporters of the, the ruling party, the Jamaica Labour Party's government, would suggest that they understand Babsy Grange's position that cricket as a financial product yes. is not as beneficial to Jamaica is that true, though? As it, as it is to other countries in the Eastern Caribbean. Okay. I'm just saying the government supporters are hanging on to that, that view. Um, there were statistics put out by the CPL people and the Talawas people that would suggest that that is not entirely true. Mm -hmm. So um, we have Dr. Akshay Man Singh coming in in a few minutes from now to further discuss this issue. But it is it is something that I expect to carry a lot of discussion in the coming months because there is a, a local government election coming up in Jamaica in a couple of months from now and I know that the opposition party will want to hang on to things like these yes. to, to generate interest to suggest that the Jamaica Labour Party's government isn't supporting sport in the way that they should. But financially, they are defending themselves to say that they are protecting the economy mm -hmm. by shying away from these things. So I, I think there's a lot to be said on this issue. Yeah, and, and you know, I hear you. The disappointing thing for me, um, Lance, and, and maybe not specific to the CPL and the franchise, because it seems as if conversations were had over a long period of time. Yeah, we can guarantee um, that that had, that had happened. Long as, meetings. Yeah, as opposed to the T20 World Cup, for example, where it seemed as if it caught the government by surprise. Yes. Um, and where I agree with the detractors um, of the Jamaican government um, is that if you are putting a plan in place... Um, then these are things that you see well in advance, not in the year of. Um, because I don't think when it comes on lands to bidding for major events or to investing in a product like the CPL, that it is uh, something for the Ministry of Sports only. It is something that the entire government has to get behind and believe in from the prime minister to the finance minister yes. um, down to the sports ministry. You need the complete buy-in. And without that complete buy-in, then it becomes significantly more difficult. Um, and we have, you take, for example, a lot of the other countries who are involved with um, the CPL notice that their prime ministers are integral in the process. Just think about all the nations who are involved with CPL and are having matches and have the finals being played in, in, in their island and playoff matches and so on. Th the leadership of those countries is integral in the decision-making process um, and integral in ensuring that their countries um, get uh, the, the type of visibility yeah. through the Caribbean Premier League and through cricket by yeah. extension. In, in the same way that Dominica's Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt and the Dominican government um, issued their statement uh, several weeks ago um, withdrawing their proposal to be part of the T20 World Cup because yes. for them they were seeing where financially based on the timelines it wouldn't have been good for them yeah. and uh, they, they, they put a, a halt on their plans to host. So uh, the point is taken that the government has an integral role to play in any of these projects. Yeah. And the truth is we're going to have many opinions on, on this issue. I personally believe that 
um, greater work has to be done yes. in, in understanding the depth of this issue and especially the financial aspect from a governmental standpoint. One of the researches I would love to be done um, before we go to this break, Lance, is to see how much, for example, Jamaica spends on sports in general, how much they invest as opposed to how much other Caribbean countries invest. Because maybe it is that Jamaica invests more overall, yes. but then cricket gets left behind because the investment goes elsewhere, maybe in track and field or football. So I think that is something that we have to look at quite closely. Let's go to a break, though. We'll continue to discuss this issue after. Stay with us. Yeah, Chris Prasad will be on then. Yeah, we're back on the Sportsmax Zone and we are talking cricket because the news broke in the past week that the Jamaica Talawas owners have resold the franchise to the Caribbean Premier League and Chris Prasad, the Florida-based Guyanese owner, um, is about to talk to us on, on this issue. Of course, we had him on the show some months ago and uh, he was outlining the long-standing issues with uh, the Jamaican government's uh, discussions with them re um, assisting with the finances of uh, staging matches in, in Jamaica and it reached a point where it was unsustainable as a business venture for Chris Prasad and his team. Chris, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. Great to have you on the show for the second time. Thanks, Lan. Lance, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. Um, let's, let's start here because um, reselling the franchise to the Caribbean Premier League has been the end product of months, even years of discussion with the Jamaican government and its own involvement financially with, with your project. When did it become glaringly obvious to you that you would have had to take this decision? Because I must say that having spoken to you before, we thought that this was a, a, a possible resultant effect. Lance, this, this has been a problem since uh, um, 2017, um, when there was no support um, for, for the team. Uh, we continued in 18, we continued in 19, all bleeding um, you know, every year. Um, we, we tried to explain to the government several times and uh, tried to make them understand that a part of the business model for franchise um, sport is for the host country to be a partner in, in that effort in exchange for the social and the financial benefit that gets uh, provided from these uh, um, um, games, you know, coming, um, you know, to the home of, of, of uh, the location. And, and uh, um, other territories understand that very well. And they, they became, you know, partners and they supported. We were, we were speculating that this will be the same um, or this will hold true for, for Jamaica. We were wrong. Mm -hmm. um, we could not um, uh, convince the, the government to, um, to join with us um, in making this, this happen. And the, bus the business model is such that a partnering arrangement um, is a requirement for the, for the sustainability and the viability of, uh, of, of uh, the tournament to be held there. Yeah, we did um, mention that your CEO, Jeff Miller, in a comment with the Jamaica Observer newspaper, did suggest that he, there was no bad blood between the Talawa's uh, ownership and, and the government. And he, in, in one sentence, gave the impression as if while he didn't agree with the lack of support, he understood the government's position that um, the football, the cricket product for the government isn't as beneficial to the government as 
as they would want. In other words, that um, financially it wasn't that major for them. Um, you've suggested prior to coming on to the show today that it's water under the bridge for you because you've now, you know, that's in the past for you and, and you're, you're, looking, you're, you're looking elsewhere. But I still gather, Chris, that it's been hugely disappointing for you that you didn't get a, a different kind of uh, partnership from the Jamaican government. Well, well, a couple of things, right? You you had asked when when things really when we start thinking of throwing in throwing in the towel, the towel. Yes. Um, we um, after we the boys and uh, the entire team worked so hard to win the tournament without playing a, a, a home games um, and get the crowd support and without getting any financial. Um, um, support our support in 2022 was zero. When we, we win the tournament, Lance, we did not get an acknowledgement, a phone call, or a thank you from anybody in the House of Government. And then I realized that um, that um, cricket is not at the top of you know anybody's agenda there. And it occurs to me that um, the the uh, uh, you know tourism is doing great. Um, and they probably don't need this. One one thing that I think uh, they 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 fail to to understand or to appreciate is the social aspect of of the of the event. If you go to all the other um, uh, uh, Caribbean uh, countries like uh, you know Guyana, Trinidad, Saint Lucia, they, you know this has become a part of a, a you know national. Um, um, event and and you know they tie um, carnival to it and you know all kinds of you know um, social um, um, you know programs that the country and and you know society benefits. I I don't think that that was taken into consideration and that that wasn't a factor, and it was only for um, um, the financial and I wouldn't say support. I would say you know partnership that we were seeking that they didn't see. Um, um, that the government, uh, you know, want to be a part of. Yeah. Um, you know, Chris, I was reading an article, and I think you were the one who said that whatever you get from Antigua and Barbuda, um, which, as we understand, is where the franchise is likely to go, um, it will be more than what you got from the Jamaican government. I just want to get an understanding of what type of kind support you would have been requesting over the years? Okay, so um, so without you know going into into specific numbers, um, whatever we are getting from Antica, if it's a dollar, it is more than what we were getting from Jamaica because in twenty two twenty three we got absolutely zero. Um, monies was 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 uh, was uh, promised, and then for one reason or another, it never came through. Um, even on the year that we won the the um, cup, um, the tournament, and uh, you know Jamaica got so much you know visibility and and benefit, uh, there was zero. So from a from a from a you know Antigua. Um, standpoint, um, if you know, if we receive a dollar, it's more than what you know, Jamaica will be will be providing uh, to us. Now, the, I, I can't go into into the numbers, but but um, um, I would say that what we are asking, you know, of Jamaica is is really to to you know a paltry, you know, compared to what you know other uh, territories were were um, were providing, you know, in in um, in partnering, you know, uh, for this um, event. Yeah, was there a distinction made between, um, I, I guess, cash support and kind support? Yes, and and we we ask for for um, some kind of uh, um, you know assistance with the the stadium, um, um, you know, to stage games there. Um, there's a there's a convoluted arrangement with with Sabina Park where you have a holding company and it's impossible to deal with those guys. Um, you know, Kingston uh, uh, Cricket Club. There, there's uh, there's a certain number of you know tickets that that were supposed to go there, but it turns out that you know three times the amount or four times the amount of people uh, you know were there. So, so we end up with, with crowds there, but 
somehow the the the, the arrangement um, you know, ends up to where you know we we don't get the the benefit that uh, that we are seeking from at the stadium level and, and and at the the government level. So it just it just became impossible um, uh, you know to stage games there. Yeah, were any types of tax breaks or anything like that included in the kind support that you would have been requesting? We, we were requesting that and no one wanted to talk about it. Mm. How involved will you be with the Antigua and Barbuda franchise? Oh, it's, it's a whole different culture there. I mean, it, it, you know, when it comes to... Uh, to cricket, it's a deep, deep appreciation for the sport. It's, it's a part of the the fabric there, and um, you know the the, the people, uh, the, the government, the sports minister, the, the prime minister, the uh, the support staff, they they welcome us, you know, with with open arms. Um, I I you know as opposed to you know to Jamaica, it, it, you know I I can never get a chance to see the the tourist the tourism guy. What's his name? Um, Ed Bartlett. I, somebody, somebody promoted a meeting, which was a very fleeting one, about four years ago. Um, Babsy, I, I met you know a few times, but um, I think she tried her best. But the, the 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 money's not given, or the money's not assigned to her for you know for for cricket. I I think that there's there's a strategic and there's a high level um, um, you know decision. To really move away uh, from um, from cricket, um, uh, especially after you see um, how much they they uh, they try to get involved with uh, you know World Cup uh, yeah. coming, I, I, I'm understanding that there's not going to be games there. So yeah. I don't know what they're going to do with those stadiums. Yeah, I, I wanted to get an idea though if you will remain part owner at least of the franchise when it moves to Antigua or are you making a clean break and will Jeff who was the Talawa CEO have any involvement or are you guys just making a, a clean break? Um, the, we, we, have, um, we have sold our rights back to CPL 100%. Okay. So we have, we have, we basically threw in the towel, a gamble and lost on it. And uh, I, I, I am, we are 100% on board, you know, with Antigua, and we have, uh, you know, big plans to uh, to get to the grassroots and make, you know, Antigua, you know, proud of their team, and uh, no looking back to Jamaica. Mm. All right. We appreciate it, Chris Prasad. Thanks very much for joining us on the Sportsman Zone today, and we wish you all the very best with the Antigua and Barbuda franchise. Thank you. All right. Let's take a break on the Sports Mag Zone. When we return, we'll be getting a reaction from Dr. Akshay Man Singh. Stay with us. Yeah, back on the Sportsman Zone, and we are talking Jamaica Talawas, which is, of course, no more, at least for now. And uh, yeah, the three-time champions, the franchise sold, resold to the Caribbean Premier League CPL. We had a chat in our last segment with Chris Prasad, the, well, how do I describe him? The foreign, former owner of the Jamaica Talawas, or the owner of the former Jamaica Talawas, whichever one you prefer, um, that is it. We're going to be having a chat with Dr. Akshay Mansingh, Dean Faculty of Sports at the University of the West Indies, um, Mona Campus, a man who has been in the nook and cranny of a cricket in this region. And uh, he joins us again on the Sportsman Zone. Dr. Mansingh, what do you make of this story? Well, deja vu. No cricket in, in Jamaica. That was the last time we were here talking as well. Yes. But um, this time is a bit a bit more concerning because last time it was palmed off on inactivity and inattentiveness of the Jamaica Cricket Association and therefore the government couldn't act. This one is devoid of the Jamaica Cricket Association. You know, this is a direct franchise to government talk. Now, you know, extricating all political uh, 
innuendos that were, were, were mentioned before. Yeah. There are many ways of looking at it. One is a business approach. Mm -hmm. The CPL travels with 300 people minimum for five days and brings spectators and so on as well. There's a lot of economic activity. In fact, in 2014, the CPL estimated economic activity to be $166 million in the region. 25.1, I think it was, million dollars in Jamaica, US dollars. In 2019, it was $17.5 million in Jamaica alone, up 60% from the year before. Now, if somebody comes to you and says that I will, for, you give me $400,000 and I'll return $12.5 million, because my analysts have said this, the first thing I'll do is get my analyst to analyze it, if I don't believe theirs, even though they're independent. Yes. I wouldn't just say, well, it's your, your calculation, therefore it's of no use. That's an attractive proposition to me. Yes. We've seen where the ministry gives, sport, gives a lot of money to, to teams that need airline tickets. Mm -hmm. Zero return. They give money to sporting events of internationally um, organizations. So internationally participated events yes. in track and field and so on, they do give monetary support yes. with returns to Jamaica. Here they're showing you that if you put in, say, $400,000 or $200,000, whatever the figure is, you get a return of $12.5 mm -hmm. That sounds like a pretty decent proposition. Mm -hmm. So there's a business side of it, countered by the fact that they say, well, we don't need the tourism because our tourism product is very good. I'm happy that our product product is good and I really believe it is. But tourism is not measured by how many hotel owners are pleased. Yes. It's measured by the trickle-down effect. And when you have sporting events, the peanut vendor, the food conservators, the taxi men, the Airbnb and other people who are opening up their places, etc., etc., are benefiting far greater than when you have somebody in a North Coast hotel. This event is in Kingston. It's not competing with the North Coast hotels. Mm. So from that point of view, the argument that we don't need the tourist, to me, is, is, is not good enough because you're actually trickling down and you're getting a different sort of tourist. Mm. So there's the business part of it. There is the participation part of it of Jamaicans who wish to make cricket their profession. Now, I stick out my head to say that cricket, perhaps, is the one sport that has provided more employment to Jamaican athletes than any other sport mm. in history. Even now, from the American Open League going right up to the IPL, mm -hmm. you've got Jamaicans playing cricket yes. and being paid fairly decently for it. Yes, we do have a lot of people in track and field, but I'm sorry to say, not many of them actually make money off of it. Yes. In fact, the aspirants are running at, at subsidies. Their the coaches have to subsidize them. Yes. There's very little sponsorship. So here is a sport which has provided more opportunities for Jamaicans than any other sport. And you're turning your back to it. That makes no sense. And the last part, which Chris Prasad had alluded to, is that it's not about money. When the Tala was won, the same year, that's last year, or the Jamaican Scorpions... About money. The Jamaica Scorpions won, yeah. Super 50. This year, the Jamaica Under-19 team won two events, and not even a letter of congratulation or posting congratulation, whereas when minor sports come third in a Caribbean competition, it's posted all over. Now, I'm not saying don't post that, absolutely post that, mm -hmm. but congratulate the guys who won as well. Yeah. So that doesn't cost any money. So it can't just be money. Mm -hmm. It must be some sort of way that they view cricket mm -hmm. as a non-sport in a country where cricket is a massive sport still yes. and where the world wants to come and watch cricket in. So when the Indians came this year, they were very upset that they weren't coming to Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> Based on everything that you have just said, um, real detailed, well thought out, no doubt about that, do you suspect that part of the problem is that the Jamaican government does not see cricket as a big deal anymore? Well, that's the conclusion you would draw. Mm -hmm. Now, when we sat here last talking about not bidding for the World Cup, it was countered by an argument saying that they put together a committee to oversee it, comprising of experts, to oversee the, the, the impact of the World Cup and having it in Jamaica. But no details were, very, were, were shared. Who was on this committee? What analysis was done? Why is it that other territories, including New York City, mm -hmm. Miami, or its environs, and Dallas, saw some value that we couldn't see? You know, Paris gets millions of, of tourists every year. That doesn't mean that they don't take the Olympic Games on. We had the opportunity of holding the second largest viewed event in the world. So my, the point I'm getting to is that if you have counter arguments, share the details with us, share the data. Mm -hmm. Because I'm putting out data, they're counter it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Dr. Mansing, uh, I heard Chris Prasad twice in the interview we did with him a few minutes ago shy away from the term that we're using about government support and spoke about partnership. 
he, he, he thinks the term partnership is a, a, a better term to describe any agreement that the government would, would have with the CPL. And it kind of ties in with a little bit of what you are saying now. Well, every sporting event, franchise event, has partnerships. Yes. So, as, as you alluded to before, this is not just a, a Ministry of Sport endeavor. This is a Government of Jamaica endeavor. Tourism has to get on board. Uh, sports has to get on board. Everybody else. So, they meet weekly at the Cabinet meetings. It's not like you don't talk to each other. If you look at CPL in Guyana, the entire week is full of activities, including concerts by who? Beres Hammond, Spice, Jamaican artists, along, amongst others, who are entertaining themselves. So it's a concerted decision. It's not just one ministry that has made this decision. Mm -hmm. It's a concerted decision where it would have gone to cabinet or should have gone to cabinet. We have the opportunity of holding a World Cup. We have the opportunity of partnering with a, a global franchise, you know, a franchise that's being seen globally. What, how do you assess it? Yeah. And that partnership never took place. Now, Chris was being very politically correct when he was speaking. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you read between the lines of what Jeff Miller, you, when you quoted him, he said, you got very, very strong verbal support from the ministry, minister, mm -hmm. but no monetary support. Yeah. So it shows that they were frustrated. Yeah. Um, every other Caribbean country, for some reason, sees reason to invest a little bit to get back a lot more from what we're hearing. Yeah. And clearly, you know, this partnership. Now, people also say, well, it's not a Jamaican owner. The fact that it wasn't a Jamaican owner was not because Jamaicans didn't have the opportunity to own the talent. It was because nobody stopped, stepped up to it. But nobody, Newcastle doesn't stop supporting Newcastle United because you have foreign owners or Chelsea gets you know, turned off by a foreign owner. It's a local business proposition. And for business propositions, you prefer partners than you do sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I want to ask you this quickly, though, Dr. Mansing, because there are there appears to be, in, in analysing this in, entire issue, that the sports minister, Babsy Grange, and Chris Prasad alluded to it just now, um, had very little sway in this. And it would be the tourism minister, Edmund Bartlett, that he would have wished to, to convince. Is it because this is a sporting mm -hmm. event, is it that Babsy Grange, as a sports minister, didn't have the clout required to 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 um, um, patch up this yeah. deal? Well, as I said, cabinet meets once a week, mm -hmm. and so if you see a proposition like this for Jamaica, which has multifaceted benefits, then you bring it up there and discuss it with the relevant ministers. I don't think the franchise necessarily should be running on every individual minister. But clearly, it's a concerted decision. I don't think it's one ministry that's made this decision. It's a concerted decision. Um, I want to just point out one other thing. Let's not just look at the Talwas as the sort of fall guys completely. Other franchises have a lot more involvement in their countries as well. For example, there are some franchises that demand that if you take X amount of local players, you get X amount of subsidy. Mm -hmm. So they actually push it, right? Yes. In 2020, the Jamaica Talwas management team had no Jamaicans except for the massage therapist. The physiotherapist, the manager, the coach, the assistant coach, everybody was a non-Jamaican. Yeah. The developmental players who are supposed to be you know, bringing up the, the youth were not Jamaicans, etc., etc. So don't think that, that you know, it's been a one-way street in terms of, of getting the, the rough deal. But it's something that could have been worked out. Clearly, if you want to develop this in Jamaica, then the, the Talos also should have taken the onus of saying we will push to get local talent exposed as opposed to bringing, you know, non-stars from elsewhere. What we're seeing in the CPL now is that the franchises are setting up academies in the country. So St. Lucia is getting an academy, Barbados is getting an academy. I think they've been 10 years slow in doing that. But that's the sort of engagement that you'd want between partners. Yeah. Dr. Mansing, Pete Russell has not ruled out a Jamaican franchise returning to the CPL um, he said at the earliest 2025, um, so 2024 mm -hmm. now clearly out of the equation. If you were a consultant for the Jamaican government, what is the advice that you would give to them now? Sure. Um, firstly, you do recognize, and I've said this openly, uh, Jamaica comprises almost 50% of the population of the West Indies. Mm. You cannot turn your back to 50% of the population, leave alone the diaspora outside. Yes. We must view this not as a franchise sport, mm -hmm. but as a sport business. 
and we should have business plans and propositions put forward to the next owners that this is our expectation, these are the returns we're looking for, and how can we partner with you? Mm -hmm. And that means some give and take. Yes, we also have to subsidize certain things, but you too have to have some commitments. You cannot be a six-week wonder where you turn up for CPL and we don't see you for the rest of the year. Yes. So there'll be a lot of things to be, do, to be done there, but the first thing you have to do is have to have a proper business plan to see who benefits, how much do they benefit, and what's the net benefit to the country, not to a Ministry of Sport or a Ministry of Tourism, to the country. Yeah. And if you feel that you've spent too much in somebody else's gain, well, go to the Minister of Finance and say, you know, allocate some of that money to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, does the government lack the expertise, you think, to get this done? And if so, where do they find the expertise to get the job done? No, but we were told that they had an expert panel that viewed it in detail to ensure that we, we were not making a mistake with the World Cup. So they have the expertise. Mm. I just want them to share what the findings were. Mm. Do you, do you, as some people are criticizing, do you anticipate, based on the government's posture with, with cricket, that there is a, a concentrated move from the Jamaican government to, to move away from cricket as a sport? Well, I mean, I don't know if the government is, is that strong about it. Yeah. There's certainly a move to not support it. They've been it. accused of, but so that's why... But a move not to support that, it. Yes. Because you've seen both financially and through the will of, of good, goodwill that it's not been supported. Uh, we did hear some statement about 100 million being given to the development of cricket in lieu of not holding the World Cup. Grassroots cricket. But that sounded, um, that sounded a bit late in, 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 as an overall vision. Yeah. Um, I don't understand why they would do that. It's still a world sport which is growing massively. And it's a sport that we excel in. So therefore, why would you turn your back to something you excel in? Especially when, listen, our football has not gone too far since, since 98. Except in the, the women. Males, in the the women. For the males. Yeah. Yeah. Our netball has remained where it is, and I'm glad for that, but not for any local investment in academies and so on that you have in other countries. Our track and field remains to be phenomenal. Uh, but that, once again, is because of the network we have, not necessarily because of the intervention of a government. What I would like to see the government doing is, is, is looking at development of sport to modernize it so that you have academies, you have competitions from overseas. We just heard where Clarendon College won in Guyana. Yes. Mm -hmm. When last time we had a, a Caribbean team come to, to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So we need that sort of, of, of outlook in sport as opposed to just looking at, you know, whose hand can we shake and who can we give an airline ticket to and who can we big up on our, our social media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mansing, thanks very much for your input. It's been a pleasure as usual. Let's take a break on the Sportsman Zone. We'll be back with more.